D and D number two, suffer the children in Jesus' name, chapter four. Toby's anger remained palpable while he fumbled with his key card and finally slammed the door to his hotel room. He stormed in, tossing the offending card frisbee style toward the dresser and looked up, astounded to find the four band members he left earlier that evening gathered at the small dining table provided in each room. How did you guys get in here? He barked. Jeff looked up and grinned. Sweet little maid, long black hair, just loves our latest album. Great. Just great. He ran a hand through his hair. Yeah, well, how about this? Get out. Shh, we're betting, Jeff answered. I'll see your two and raise you five, he nodded at Ace to his left. What part of get out do you not understand? It's nice to see you too, Nash, Ace quipped. Before nodding at Jeff, I'll see your five. What if I brought a girl back with me? Jeff chuckled. Oh, we bet on that too. He held his hand out, palm up. Unless old Toby's got a girl in his pocket, I believe you all owe me twenty. Three men placed a twenty dollar bill in Jeff's hand. Toby stormed across the room toward the table, grabbed Jeff's cards, and threw them down. Out. Hey, I had a winning hand there. Billy Bob, nineteen year old twin brother musical prodigies, who moved, spoke, and played as one, both reached for their money in the pot. They were an odd pair. William and Robert, who were referred to as Billy Bob, always responded as one unit. It was uncanny, or as some put it, freaky. William played the mandolin and Robert the fiddle, or so it was believed. It was hard to tell. Freaky they may be, but stupid they weren't. They pocketed their money quickly. All right, Toby, now you've gone and piss me off, Jeff threatened. What are you going to do about it, Toby scowled. He was itching for a fight, and Jeff was just the one who could deliver. He'd been his best friend since grade school and was also one heck of a drummer. Almost the same size as Toby, Jeff had obliged him in many brawls over the years. Jeff rose. You wanting to fight me, Toby? Toby didn't answer, only spread his arms open wide. I tell you, Nash, there's nothing I'd like better than to kick your hind end right now. But you see, man, we ain't out on the farm. This is a fancy hotel in New York City, and I don't think it would be very good press to get thrown out of here. Six foot four, 225 pounds of solid muscle farm boy Toby only heard the part about Jeff kicking his hind in. You really think you could take me down? Ace rose now, along with Billy Bob. Well, maybe he couldn't, but I think the four of us could make a dent, big boy. Now, why don't you just settle down? Toby looked from face to face. Defeated and emotionally exhausted, he slumped down on the bed. Ace shook his head. He was the eldest at 37. Ace the bass man. He loved that bass, and it showed whenever he played. Right now, though, he was playing Big Brother. That skirt really messed you up, didn't she? Toby laid back, scrubbing his face with his hands. You have no idea. Jeff gathered his cards and what was left of his winnings. That reminds me, you owe me 200 for your bar bill. Toby sighed and pulled out his wallet, then remembered he'd emptied it. I'm broke. I'll have to owe you. Jeff laughed. You get taken, Toby? Is that what this is all about? Did that cute little blonde with the gorgeous legs take you for a ride? Toby's face darkened and he rose quickly. Ace moved fast, bracing his arms against Toby, Toby's chest. Let's move it, Jeff. you said enough. I think Toby's good for the money. We'll leave Lover Boy here to cry in his beer. Well, don't be late for the red carpet, Nash, Jeff ordered, but softened at the look of despair on his friend's face. Hey, I'll be in to check on you later. Finally alone, Toby paced the room, going over the night's events. He tried to put logic to everything that happened and everything he'd said, but he couldn't, because nothing made sense. Why was he so angry? He'd been unbelievably happy to have found Caroline. It was like a freaking miracle. He shook his head. He turned and shoved that miracle right back in God's face. His mind dazed and confused and his energy draining. He stretched out across the bed. Caroline had grown up and had far surpassed what he'd imagined, only he'd never imagined her selling herself. He should have figured something was up. All night she hadn't wanted to talk about herself. I suppose not, he mumbled. He thought about her leaning over... <clears throat> <clears throat> to clear the table, giving a little taste of what could be bought. 
a definite hooker move? What if he hadn't noticed her name tag? What if Jeff had decided to take her up on her obvious offer? He groaned. He rolled over and buried his face in the pillow. He had to stop thinking about it or he would go crazy. He needed sleep. Maybe he would think more clearly after a few hours of shut-eye. New scene. Caroline made it back to her apartment and collapsed on the old worn sofa. She thought she'd become strong over the years. She thought she didn't need anyone. Yet the minute Toby had reappeared in her life, she'd realized she needed him desperately. Why hadn't she told him the truth? Why had she let things go so far? Then again, why had he judged her so quickly and so harshly? Who did he think he was? Oh, she groaned. Everything was so messed up. And besides all that, she was totally exhausted and in a few hours would have to teach her Saturday morning class. She glanced at the clock. She should be able to get in about four hours of sleep. And then she would teach her class and come home and figure out what she would wear to the music awards because she would go. She would go and show him that she wasn't ashamed in any way. And if he tried to talk to her, she would tell him to get lost and that would make her feel mighty good. Her decision made, she leaned her tired head against the arm of the sofa and in only a few minutes was sound asleep. A few hours later, Carolina woke with a start. Someone was pounding on her door. She stumbled to the door and opened it a crack. What do you want? She demanded of George Mancini. He pushed the door open all the way and strode in. I believe you know what I want. She shivered as his eyes moved over her. Did you have a long night? He asked. She looked down, self-consciously smoothing the skirt and blouse she'd slept in. You know, Caro, it doesn't have to be this way. I can be nice. She re he reached out to touch her shoulder. Very nice. She stepped away. I'm sure. She started to reach into her pocket to pull out the money when he grabbed her roughly by the arm and shoved her against the wall, holding her there with the weight of his body. You're not so high and mighty, you know. You're a waitress. A waitress at a low-class diner, making less than minimum wage. Maybe you should reconsider the offer I'm making you. When she tried to jerk away, he threw her back to the wall and pressed his mouth to hers, and she bit down. Why, you little... George stepped back, spitting blood from his lip. Carol moved away quickly, backing toward the kitchen. Here, please, just take your money and get out, she ordered, thrusting her hand inside the pocket of her skirt. But the money wasn't there. Panicked, she searched the other side. No money, only the tickets Toby had given her to the music awards. Her face paled. Where is it? She mumbled. Rushing to the sofa, she threw off the cushions, searching. Where is it? If you think I'm going to fall for your lost money routine, you're dead wrong, sweetheart. You picked up a job last night. That much is plain. So dish it out, Cookie. She ignored him, desperately going over her steps in her mind. When, where could she have lost it? I know I had it before I ran into Toby. Just the thought of him caused a wave of despair to watch over her. Think, she told herself. I'm pretty sure I had it after we ate at the restaurant. When could I have lost it? Then it hit her. The man. The one she'd run into as she was leaving the hotel. He'd made such a big deal about knocking her down and helping her up and brushing her off. He'd stolen her money. Oh, no. She turned a fearful glance in George's direction. I, I had the money, I swear. I think someone stole it. George advanced on her. Yeah, right. And pigs fly. He grabbed her, pushed her down onto the sofa. She struggled as he did his own search. What's this? He pulled his hand out of her skirt pocket and held up two golden tickets. His eyes big, he snickered. Well, 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 what have we here? You got tickets to the music awards? Grinning, he held the tickets out of her reach as he rose and stood over her. These will do just fine, Caro. No, she jumped up, reaching for the tickets, but he held her off. Sorry, Caro, I can't stay. I have things to do. He shoved her away and headed for the door. New scene. Jeff arrived in Toby's room about noon, but the wake-up call wasn't necessary. Toby sat against the headboard, his hands behind his head. Hey, man, brought you some breakfast. He threw a fast food bag at his friend. Toby nodded. Thanks. So what's the deal, bro? Toby sighed. I found her. Her? Her who? Her, the one, you know, the girl I told you about, Caroline. The girl from the song Four Days? You're kidding. Nope, not kidding. The waitress? That's her? Yep. 
Well, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, except the waitress deal is only a front. She's a prostitute. You're kidding. Nope, not kidding. Wish that I were. Jeff sat and digested the information. So life has been pretty rough on the poor thing. Toby grimaced at Jeff's compassionate words. He shook his head. She's turning tricks. She lets strangers use her body. Makes me feel sick and mad. Freaking real mad. I can't seem to get control. Jeff listened. He was a good listener, and what he heard was his friend struggling with a large green monster. How can she let men use her like that? The girl I knew had been so shy and timid. Well, then that means things must have been pretty bad for her, huh? I mean, for someone as shy as you say she is to allow strangers to touch her or for her to touch them, things must have been unbearable. Maybe it makes her just as sick. Brow furled, Toby went over Jeff's words in his mind, groaning as he came to some realizations. Ugh. How could I not see that? I should have been thinking of her and what she's been going through. I should have been thinking about how hard it must be for her to, to, to do it. I should have been thinking of how to help her, you know, get her off the streets. Instead, I got angry. I let her know just what I thought of her. Toby rose from the bed. Oh, man, I really messed up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Toby groaned aloud at Jeff's remark. His friend never pulled any punches. I just came unhinged, man. The thought of all those guys. Ugh. Finish it, Toby. The thought of all those guys touching what you considered to be yours. Toby turned and nodded at Jeff, the light beginning to come on. That's right. I do think of her as mine. And if you think of her as yours, then you want off on her. Why? He hung his head and sighed. Because I was jealous. Big time. Toby sat down again and reached for the bag Jeff brought, pulled out a greasy breakfast sandwich and bit off a large chunk. Thinking as he chewed, a sudden epiphany stopped him cold. He dropped the sandwich on the paper. Oh, Jesus, Lord, help me. What? It's more than jealousy, Jeff. Know what I mean? I mean, yes, I was jealous, but what I mean is I... I... Jeff decided to help. You love her. Toby rubbed his face with both hands. Yeah, I think I do. I don't understand how it's possible, but I do. I mean, I've been in the girl's presence a total of about four days, and most of that time occurred 15 years ago. How can I feel the way I do? Jeff shrugged. I guess she's pretty special, regardless of her present profession. Man, I have to find her. I have to make it up to her. Toby's mind raced. He needed to see her. He needed to rectify the situation. He had no idea where she was, but he would tear the city apart to find her. Maybe, just maybe, she would still come to the awards tonight, and if not, he would head back to the bar, and if she wasn't there, he'd have a talk with that Maurice guy. Jeff's mind was also racing, but in a completely different direction. He laid a hand on Toby's shoulder. Well, this sort of brings up a little complication. The entire deal is complicated, Toby agreed. Yes, but I think you're forgetting about a major detail. What detail is that? The wedding. Your wedding. Toby's jaw dropped open. I forgot about Tracy. And that, my friend, says it all. New scene. Madam was watching her favorite student teach a dozen little girls to love dance. Caroline didn't realize she was doing that, but she was, and Madame Pierre was so proud of her. Caroline was so very good with the children, understanding their every need, knowing instinctively where a child might need help or have a difficulty. She recognized their moods and worked around someone having a bad day. And more importantly, the children loved her. They loved coming to her class, and when they leave her and move on to other teachers, they will already have the love of dance so embedded in their souls that they'll be able to face any adversity in their dance career. Bonjour, Miss Caroline, the children called at class's end. Bonjour, mes petites belles, she answered sweetly. Good class, Madam praised as the little ones were collected by their parents. But you look tired. Are you okay? 
Yes, ma'am, I'm fine. It's just that I picked up an extra job last night and didn't get much sleep. Oh, you work too hard, dear. She glanced at her watch. I have no time now, but you will come to see me at my office sometime this week. Yes, I have an offer I'd like to discuss with you. Caroline smiled at her as she gathered her things. I will, yes. I promise. She kissed the older woman's cheek. Au revoir. That sounded promising, Caroline thought as she walked home. Maybe I'll be able to pick up teaching some extra classes like I'd hoped. Still, the thought only lifted her spirits for a moment. Her mind kept wandering back to the words Toby had spoken to her last night. The beautiful ones and the ugly ones. She was torn between being angry with him and desperately wanting to see him again. And when he kissed her, she thought she'd gone to heaven. In his arms, she was safe. She yearned for that, but no, he was wrong to judge her. And wasn't she just such a loser because she still wanted to see him again? Funny thing, it didn't matter what she wanted because thanks to George Mancini, seeing Toby was next to impossible. She could go to the hotel and hang out and wait for him to show. Ick, how needy is that? Surely I have a scrap of pride left, she reasoned with herself. I thought I was a much stronger, independent woman that I'm turning out to be. Suddenly this guy comes back into my life and I turn into a weepy puddle of mush. Yet, am I the sort of person who would be stupid enough to cut off her nose to spite her face? No, I'm practical, I'm down to earth, and I do want to see Toby again, if only to set him straight. Still, I just can't go chasing after him after all the hurtful things he said. Well, she thought, he did say he would be in town for a while. She decided that somehow she will find a way to see him again. New scene. Toby paced nervously backstage. They would perform one of the opening numbers, but that wasn't what was bothering him. His eyebrows rose in question as Jeff approached. It's not her, Jeff said, unless she's wearing a very bright red wig and gained about 30 pounds. There's some greasy guy, too, wearing a matching red tuxedo, but maybe you should go look for yourself. I mean, I didn't see her well enough last night to know if this girl is her. Toby did exactly that, and by the time he returned, the show was underway, and he was mad again. It wasn't her, and who was the guy? Probably her pimp. That infuriated him to no end. She'd handed her tickets over to the same man who'd probably... <sighs> he couldn't keep the visuals from playing in his mind. The thoughts were driving him crazy. It was all he could do to pull himself together long enough to get his performance out of the way. New scene. Caroline stood in the department store aisle, her eyes glued to the television screen. She turned up the volume. Her heart beat a mile a minute as they interviewed Toby on the red carpet. She should walk away, just turn and walk away. But she was weak, and she felt warm all over just seeing him. He smiled warmly as he spoke. He was humble, down to earth, warm and friendly. Either their little spat last night hadn't affected him at all, or he was a really good actor. He told the interviewer it didn't matter who won. He was simply grateful for the opportunity to sing. She could understand that because that was exactly how she felt about dancing. She was still standing there some time later when he performed. Caroline thrilled at his voice. It brought back the memory of that wonderful night when she'd sat in his home and listened to him sing. She remembered she'd wanted to stay there and never go home. She found herself missing him desperately. Awesome, isn't he? Caroline glanced over at a young woman with a toddler in a stroller. She smiled and nodded. Yes, he is. That voice could melt butter. The woman giggled. I wasn't talking about his voice. Caroline laughed. He is one good-looking man. She didn't mention that she had been in that good-looking man's arms just a few short hours ago. The woman moved on, but Caroline stayed until the end, thrilling when he won favorite hit single category and deflated when he lost out on country album of the year to a female group. When it was over, she admitted, the loneliness and sadness seeped back into her psyche. Her mind kept returning to the feelings she had experienced at his touch less than 24 hours ago. She'd had a few boyfriends over the years, but none had ever made her feel like that, like she would give him anything. Well, she certainly couldn't stand here and pine away for him for the rest of her life. She must either forget him or try to see him. Her mind said the former, her heart the latter. She would follow her mind. She'd never had much luck following her heart, but she immediately reneged. 
She just had to see him again. Okay, compromise. She would forget him for a few days, give him time to realize he'd made a huge mistake. That's not weakness, she reasoned with herself. It's just common sense. New scene. While Toby's peers partied and celebrated, he hurried back to the hotel lounge. The bartender smiled up at him as he leaned across the bar. What can I get for you, sir? I'm looking for Maurice. A second man made his way behind the bar. You have found him. I'm trying to find a waitress you had working here last night, Caroline Jones. You mean Caro? She doesn't actually work for me. She was just helping out last night. She's not one of my regular waitresses. Toby nodded. Yeah, I know. He ran a hand through his hair. He didn't want to be reminded of that fact. Listen, I uh, I need to locate her. Maurice's eyebrows rose. Alice had told him about Carol's excursion with the singer. He wasn't sure if he should give this guy any information at all. So far, he saw no reason to do so. I'm sorry, sir, I can't help you. She was a last-minute hire. I didn't even get any paperwork on her, and she left before her shift was over. I have no idea where she went. Maybe it was years of playing poker that made Toby sure that Maurice was lying. He looked around the room to see if he could spot her, but to no avail. Sighing heavily, he turned back to Maurice. Look, man, I get that you're trying to protect her, and that's cool. I can appreciate that, but you see, Carol and I go way back. Maurice shrugged. Yeah, well, Yankees and Red Sox go way back. Know what I mean? Toby nodded. Point taken. He realized he was going to have to get personal with this guy. Okay, listen. Carol and I have been friends since we were kids, and seeing each other again last night sort of blew us away, and we left here together. If you're mad about her not finishing her shift, it was my fault. We were so excited about seeing each other that she didn't even think about the fact that she was on the clock. And when she realized what she'd done, she was horrified. He reached for his wallet. That reminds me. Let me pay for the broken glasses. Uh, your friend already took care of it. Toby's eyes narrowed. So, if he knew Jeff was his friend, he knew more than he was letting on. Look, I messed up. I upset her. I only want to find her to apologize. I swear that's all I want to do. The two men stood face to face, each measuring the other. Maurice finally shrugged. I know she works at a diner. Eugene's diner. Eight blocks south, two blocks east on the corner. And that is all I know. Toby extended his hand. You are a lifesaver. Maurice smiled. Will you tell her she's the best waitress I've ever had and she can work for me anytime? Toby was smiling as he stepped off the elevator and headed down the corridor toward his room, but his smile faded as he approached and found a woman leaning against his door. He raised his eyebrows in question as he neared her. I have a message for you from Caro. Heart pounding, he waited for her to speak. She thrust a handful of bills out toward him. She says to go to hell. He sighed heavily. When he didn't take the money, she grabbed his hand and placed it in his palm, and she turned to leave, her chin held high. Do you know where she lives? She stopped and looked over her shoulder and laughed out loud, like I would tell the likes of you. Wait, he pleaded, please. Will you talk to me? When she looked doubtful, he added, just for a minute. She moved toward him, a wary look in her eye. What's your name? She didn't see any problem with telling him. Rosie. Rosie McShay. Toby smiled his most charming smile. Well, Rosie McShay, I think it's great that Caroline has a friend like you. I mean, in her uh, profession, you need friends you can trust. If you're trying to charm me, it's not a very good start. He blew out a breath. Look, she sent you here, so she must know. The, so you must know the story. I was wrong. I shouldn't have judged her. It was a gut reaction. I only want to apologize. If after that she still doesn't want to see me, I'll go away. But please, at least give me a chance. Rosie frowned. You mean, it's okay she's a hooker? You forgive her? She asked sarcastically. No, that's not what I mean. I want to apologize to her. I want her to forgive me for being so stupid and for judging her. Rosie smiled. You were stupid, you know. Uh, so I've been told. She looked him over, considering. Carol hadn't told her to set him straight about her profession, yet, since Rosie herself was the one who'd caused the problem to begin with, she should at least try to fix the situation. You're wrong, you know. Carol was not a hooker. What do you mean? 
She's not a hooker, Rosie enunciated slowly. She went on to tell him how the entire misunderstanding took place. By the time Rosie had finished, Toby was happy and miserable at the same time. Happy she had not turned to the streets, but so sorry that he'd hurt her. He never thought he would be included in that category. I have to make this up to her, he murmured. I owe you big time, Rosie McShay. Yeah, you do. Will you tell me where she lives? Rosie shook her head. Can't do that, but she'll be at work at Eugene's at 6 a.m. Monday morning. She poked her finger at Toby's chest. Now you make yourself useful and make her smile again. Got it? Toby took her hand. I was serious, you know. What I said earlier, I am genuinely glad Caroline has a good friend like you. Rosie blushed. Ah, uh, go on now. Toby smiled as he watched her leave. His heart felt much lighter as he unlocked his door, noticing the key card worked perfectly this time. Figures. Taking a quick shower, he stretched out across the bed. His mind was rushing about, wondering how he would be able to win Caroline's forgiveness and her heart. Because he loved her. He did. And never had he felt this way about a woman before, not even with his fiance, Tracy. Especially not with Tracy. Tracy. What in the world was he going to do about Tracy? What could he have been thinking when he'd consented to marry her? How could that even have happened? She was attractive, yes, he admitted. She, he met her at a charity fundraiser where he'd been headlining. She was daddy's little rich girl who, according to her, was misunderstood, used, and abused. That's how she'd gotten to him, he just realized. Damn, his soft heart. He was usually a pretty good judge of character, but heck, she was good. His own family hadn't been very taken with her and had let him know, which had only added to the I'm so misunderstood melodrama. According to Tracy, her father had begun to demand she marry and marry well, and there was no way he would let her reach 30 and remain single in his home. He had some old-fashioned idea about her becoming an old maid after 30, and Tracy had been so dramatic. How could she live on her own? She had no job, no career. How could her father actually expect her to work and support herself in a matter to which she was accustomed? She'd gone on and on, and Toby had been through several botched relationships and had begun to think that falling in love to be a much sought after and unobtainable illusion, at least for him. One day, at a weak and not very sober moment, He'd finally given in to Tracy and consented to the marriage, figuring he'd never find real love anyway. Now, though, he realized that was because he'd already had it. What he thought was only an illusion turned out to be something real. Love is real and blissful, and he finally understood the world's preoccupation with it. He shook his head in disgust at his stupidity. Why hadn't he known real love existed? His parents were certainly in love with each other and his sister and her new husband and the Stillwaters. No wonder his parents had been so frustrated with him when he and Tracy had been engaged. Well, now, he'd finally seen the light and he intended to fix everything. He pulled out his phone. A quick call to Eugene's told, told him the diner was not a 24-hour establishment. And as soon as he ended the call, his phone vibrated. He answered without noticing the caller ID. Yeah. Hello, darling. I'm so happy for you. Favorite hit single. It's so wonderful. I wish I could have come with you, but you know, Daddy. If I missed his 60th birthday, he would never hear the end of it. Toby grimaced. Hello, Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Is that all you have to say? Oh, Toby, are you down because you lost out on country album of the year? Don't worry about it, darling. As soon as you do what I've been telling you all along, get rid of that makeshift band, hire on some real musicians, and maybe a professional songwriter, and you'll make it next year for sure. Not that the songs you write aren't good, but just maybe you need to expand some. You know what I mean? Anyway, we can talk all about this later, so tell me, how much do you miss me? He held his silence just a moment too long. Toby, are you there? He sighed. Yeah, I'm here, Tracy. What's wrong, Toby? Hmm, uh, nothing. I'm just a little tired. He stopped. No, nope. he wasn't going to lie to her or to himself. Not anymore. That's the least he could do. She deserved the truth. Tracy? Yes, darling? We need to talk. 
This time it was Tracy who was silent. Tracy? Talk? Yes, talk. I suppose this is not to discuss the colors on the wedding cake? No, it's not. This is important. I beg to differ, but I think the colors on our cake are very important, monumentally important. Yes, I know you do. So what are you saying, Toby, that we don't think alike, that we think different things are important? Tracy, please stop twisting my words and going round in circles. It's not something I want to discuss over the phone. I'll fly home. Give me a few days. I'll need to get to a break in the recording session. She bucked up pretty quickly. Don't bother flying home, Toby. Whatever you have to say, you say it to me now. It's obvious it's not good news. Not for me, anyway. She paused briefly while she thought. Look, Toby, if it's a girl in each town kind of thing, it's all right. It's not like we can't work around that. I understand you're a young, virile man. Don't worry about it. You've always had such a conscience, she gave a brittle laugh. He closed his eyes. you got to be kidding me. I may be the worst kind of creep, but I don't use women like that. How can you think that? You know me better than that. Well, then, what is it? She demanded, her voice becoming agitated. What else could it be? Is there someone else? I mean, in the few days you've been in New York, have you suddenly fallen in love with someone else? Have you realized in the few short hours we've been apart that you don't want to marry me? Have you met someone you just can't do without? What is it? The remarks she made were meant to be ludicrous, so how could he tell her they were all true? It's not like that, Tracy. It's a very long and complicated story. So there is someone else, and you are breaking off our engagement, she shrieked. Tracy, if you would just give me a chance to explain. I want you to understand. I want you to know it has nothing to do with you. Oops. He knew immediately those words were a mistake. Nothing to do with me? She was screaming now. This has everything to do with me. You son of a... He held the phone away from his ear. Now, now calm down, Tracy. Calm down? Don't you tell me to calm down. Look, what I mean is, well, if I could just make you understand, it would be unfair to you if we get married. Yeah, well, why don't you let me be the judge of what's best for me? Tracy, you deserve to marry someone who's head over heels in love with you. Look. You know I care for you, but I've never told you anything other than that. You know as well as I that we agreed to marry more to help you out with your father than for anything else. Yes, but I thought you'd grow to love me. And you would, Toby. I just know it. If you would just give us a chance. Tracy, that's not the way it works. Of course it is, darling. Tracy, you should have let me come home and talk this over with you. Well, come home then, Toby. Come home and I'll show you how good it can be. Tracy, come to me, and I'll make you never want to leave. Tracy, what? Just say it, Toby. What do you want to tell me? Darn it, Tracy, why do you make me have to be blunt? Look, my heart belongs to someone else, and I've recently realized it always has, and I've also realized it always will. Silence. However, this one was not golden. It hung black and ominous in the air, and then he heard the sniff. Oh, no. Tracy, don't cry. I had to be honest with you. We would never have been happy. I hate you, she sobbed before she slammed the receiver down. Join the club, he whispered. He hadn't wanted to hurt her, but he couldn't live the lie even a minute longer. He turned out the light and stretched, letting his mind wander. Visions of Caroline's sad eyes floated through his brain. He could see her as a child with that tremendous goose egg on her forehead, dreading going home to her mother. She'd looked at him last night with those same sad eyes, only he'd been the one to make them sad. And now he'd done the same thing to Tracy. His mother said he was always trying to heal the world. Well, he was doing one heck of a job today. He pressed the heel of his hands to his eyes. Caroline came back into his thoughts. He remembered how her mouth tasted. The kiss for which he'd waited so long had been everything he'd imagined. She'd felt so good and so right in his arms. It had been obvious she felt the same. And then he'd blown it. Groaning, he rolled over onto his stomach. Sleep would be hard coming tonight. And that is the end of chapter four.